In this video, we're going to look at doing various types of correlations here in Stata. If you want to follow along, I've got a data set open here that is available in the show notes. Let me slide this over just a little bit. You'll see in this data set that I've got 20 scale items. They're Likert scale type items, and I'm going to use those here. Um, there's a variety of commands. The first command that's often used is the COR command. It's fairly fast and easy to remember, um, but it has some disadvantages in terms of some of the options that are not available with it. So I can go ahead and, and, and type that. Just hit enter and you're going to see the results. Now if yours wrapped around, it's because this window's not big enough. If you just resize the window so that it fits and then run it again, it'll work for you a little bit better. So that's the, the first kind of command we can use. Now the options um, that we can do for that, if you want to see them, you can always of course type help and then the name of the command. Um, that's one way to review and see what it is you can do. But there's not a whole lot of options here. One that you can do is if I put a C um, after a comma, then C, then it's going to give me covariances instead of correlations. Now, be aware that um, the other the other function instead of core, this PW core that we're going to use in just a minute doesn't allow you to look at covariances instead of correlations. So this is the only way to look at these Pearson covariances instead of correlations is to use the COR command. It also allows you to, I'll take that off, look at um, means and so forth of the variables, mean standard deviations, basic summary statistics of your variables within the same command to run it and to have it give you that output. So I just added that comma M for mean here and you'll see I got a table with mean standard deviations and mins and max for all my variables at the same time. But those are the basic among the most useful commands and, and options that we can do here with the core command. Now the, um, the next command that we can do is PW core. Um, it looks like that. And it's very much the same, but it has some different options that I can add to it. So if I just run it just basically like that, you'll see it looks quite similar except for it segments the table, you know, this matrix really into pieces instead of doing it all, you know, to the right. So it's actually more useful in terms of not worrying about the wraparound happening. So, so that's otherwise it, it is very much the same. However, I've got a variety of other options that I can add in here. For example, I can have it give me my significance levels and my p-values just by typing comma sig. Now when I run it, you'll see there'll be a second row after each of these that has the p-values. In addition to that, or instead of that, I can have it star um, those that are statistically significant. So at any threshold I want. Let's say I want to star them if they're, if the p-values are less than or equal to 0.01. Then I just can type in a star and the, that value. And you'll see it'll put an asterisk by all of those. And when I've done that, then if I want to, of course, I can take out looking at the actual p-values. I can take them out and just look at the act, just star the ones that are less than some value. That's one option. Okay. Now, um, another th option that I can do that's quite similar is I can have it just print or look at those that have a p-value. It's going to only display in these tables here the correlations if the p-value is less than 0.05. And then I'm also leaving in there to star if they're less than 0.01. You can use either or both and you see that it's just cleared them out. If the p-value is less than 0 0.05, so it's not statistically significant at a 0 0.05 threshold, then you don't even see it here in the table, which reduces some clutter and um, some smaller values. Now, it is possible also to do a bone Ferroni um, correction. Just type a B there at the end, which corrects the p-values because we're doing multiple analyses here. And you will see when you do that, that fewer of them are going to be statistically significant um, using that threshold. 
So that's another um, option that we can use here. Um, the only other ones that are real, real significance to note is you can just put in observations to have it tell you how many observations were used in each of these. By default, this is doing um, including, if you've got any missing data, it's including them if they're pairwise um, complete. Okay, so if the two variables um, for, you know, any one correlation, if the, if the two variables are complete, but I can change that to be a case-wise or list-wise complete, which is the same thing, by typing either a case or list in there, and it will only complete those that are um, case-wise or list-wise complete, which you see is problematic here because I've got, oh, no, that wasn't what took it out. It was the observations. Um, scrolled it down a little faster because it had extra rows, and you can see the number of observations used. So that's the basics of what I can do with these commands here. Now, um, it could be that what you don't want, you don't want a Pearson correlation. Maybe you want a, a Spearman or Kendall's Tau correlation. Now, um, a Pearson correlation is used with um, interval ratio data. So <clears throat> we need to assume that our data is interval ratio. Sometimes we use the term scale. Sometimes people use the word continuous for that, although that's not precisely correct. But um, what we want to use um, for interval ratio data, we'll typically use a Pearson correlation. And we also make the assumption that our data is linear. So it's only measuring the strength of, of how well a line would fit through any pair of variables here. So if any of those things aren't quite true, what we can use is the Spearman's row or Kendall's tau, either one of those. Now those are two different statistics that are developed um, to handle this situation, and um, there's some little bit of debate, but it's not real clear often as to which is better. I'll put a link to an article on that for any of you who are interested in the show notes in case you're interested in which, um, or at least I'll put a reference for an article if you're interested in, you know, using one of the two. I think Spearman's is a little more commonly used maybe in introductory statistics courses, so, so it may be something you've more likely heard of. And what we're doing in both these cases is we're correlating the ranks. Um, you see that uh, my data here, if it's Likert type data, technically is ordinal, not interval ratio, although often we treat Likert type data as if it is interval ratio. Um, but in this case, let's say that we want to treat it as if it's ordinal. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use um, either the, the Spearman or the um, Zero or the Kendall's Tau statistic. And the options and things work differently for these commands. I will actually just type in Spearman to do a Spearman. And I'll do scale 1 to scale 20. So the basics of how to use the function are quite similar. And you see that gives me a matrix that actually wrapped around here because this is a little bit, I had made my window a little bit smaller. So you see that I've, I've got that here. And um, I'm going to go through and show you some of the options you can do here. Um, after you type in those, you can you, know, you put in a comma, and then you can put in your your options. Many of the options go within this stats parentheses. So you put stats parentheses like that. Now, if you were to type help Spearman or something so that you can see the options here available in Stata, you'll see that it often gives you the option to put row there. Well, it gives you that by default. That's just this actual um, coefficient. So you don't necessarily need to put that in there. Um, you can put a P in there to get the P values. So if I hit that in there, now I get all P values. Okay, so what if I want both? Well, then of course you would put the row and the P in there both if you want to see both of those. So now I've got my my row, my actual coefficient, and my p-value underneath by putting that within that stats parentheses there. Then um, the other things that we might do here is we might also use the bone Ferroni correction. We can type it all out. Um, I believe just the B, putting a B here works. And it does, doesn't give me an error. So putting a B for bone for knee, that gives me the correction um, there. So those are some of the, the basic things that I can do using this particular function. I can also use these 
um, the star in print option that I used with um, the, the Pearson correlation. So maybe I want to star all of those that are less than 0.01 and maybe I want to print all of those that are less than 0.05. So that'll print those that are statistically significant at this threshold and also star them if they are statistically significant at that threshold. So I can add those um, options in as well and you see then it's blanked out a lot of this and has put stars on those where that is appropriate. Okay, so those are the, the things you'd probably um, use here. Okay, now um, the Kendall's Tau works very similar to, to the Spearman K Tau. I'm going to take the options off for now and we'll just look at it and um, that gives you the, the Kendall's Tau. Okay, now there are some options that I can put here. There's this stats option. Kendall's Tau has um, really two different versions, a Tau A and a Tau B. Tau A is given by um, default. Tau B is also available. You can get either one or both. If you're interested in knowing the difference, then I would refer you to, to Googling that and, and looking at what the difference is of those two. I think even Wikipedia discusses the differences if you want to look at those. So you can so you can put those particular options in and you can put in um, P for P values. Okay. Oops, I put tau B twice. So tau A and tau B will give me my two different taus. You see that they're a little bit different. First one, second one, and the P value. First, second, P value, and so forth. And then after I've done that, I can add in the other options, which are similar to what we found. Whoops, there are stats. We found with the other, we can put um, print. Maybe we'll do the 0.05 threshold again. Star at a 0.01 or whatever I wish. And if I um, wish, I can also do the Bofferni correction. And you'll see that'll run through just fine. So that's the basics of doing, you know, pairwise correlations um, that for either our um, interval ratio data using a Pearson correlation. Remember, we can use the, the core command or we can do the PWCORR, the pairwise core command, if we want to, um, to use have a better set of options essentially. We'll have more options that way with the exception of being able to see a covariance matrix which can only be done with a core command. And then we have the Spearman and Kendall's Tau and again I'll have a the um, reference for an article in the notes if you're interested in knowing which one of those is is more appropriate to use for your situation.